Chapter 16, Developing a Literacy Environment. How can you make your classroom into a place where it's easy for people to learn to read? Um, let's talk about it. So <clears throat> we're going to learn in this chapter, planning materials for language activities, assisting in replacement of materials and describing early childhood games. There's a lot of information in your chapter, um, specific stuff you can do. So you wanna make sure that you actually read the chapter. Um, you want to look for materials that promote language in your classroom. So things that provide reality behind the words, things that link the written word to, um, you know, reality, um, give children sensory explorations, provide materials that build communication skills, favorite materials that can be used in a variety of ways, you know, using Play-Doh to make letters is fun and it helps kids learn their letters, right? Um, and materials that allow skills practice. So what would you include in a print rich environment? Let's brainstorm. Um, you're gonna say things like alphabet letters on the wall. You're gonna say things like pens and paper and all that kind of stuff. So let's see. Labeling your areas, um, with pictures and words. So in your different centers in your classroom, in your block center, it's a good idea to have a picture of children playing with blocks and the word blocks center there. Um, and then within your block center, you're gonna have the bins that you keep your box blocks in with a photo of the blocks and maybe the word blocks. And then on the shelf where you put that bin, you're gonna have the same thing. So you're showing the children, oh, these are blocks. See, I can see the picture of the blocks, so I know the blocks go here. And look, those letters, I bet that says blocks, right? Um, a message board where kids can write messages or you can write messages, a question of the day, right? Or um, a poll or something, um, a helper chart, print props in your play areas, buckets with pens and paper, um, a variety of stuff so that kids can have opportunities and experiences writing, using letters, using words, etc. cetera. Um, the Language Arts Center. Now, in my classrooms, we didn't have, let's say, a specific Language Arts Center. Um, in my forest classroom, we often had a writing center where we would have a desk with a variety of writing materials and letter charts and letter um, tracing, um, all kinds of stuff for writing. Um, but then, and then you would have like your library that has your books and that kind of stuff. Um, we would, those two spaces would generally be pretty close together too. Um, as far as the Language Arts Center goes, it seems like a good idea. I've never done it before. I've done it with a library and a writing center. Um, but you also want to think about language arts is happening all throughout the classroom. So if you have a dedicated language arts center, are you feeling like this is where we do language arts? Because you should be doing it all over the place. It should be in blocks. You should have pieces of paper to make signs and write notes and draw plans in blocks. You should have cookbooks and um, recipe cards and all that kind of stuff in your housekeeping area if you have a kitchen. You should have um, writing materials and letter stamps and things in your art area. You should have um, you know, ways to do charts and graphs and things in your science area. So a language arts center to me seems like maybe not the best idea but having language arts um, supplies and activities th available throughout your classroom is really important. Um, these are some of the materials you might find in a language arts center. And I think they need to be, again, all over the classroom. So what is a teacher's role in working with language arts with children? Being compassionate, modeling language. We've talked about that, making signs or charts, modeling how we use communication with each other explaining new materials when you put out new games or you put out new um, writing materials or whatever, right? Explaining what those are for the kids and how they work. And then providing reading aloud, reading aloud recordings, reading aloud opportunities, whatever. Um, language and literacy in the whole classroom. This is my philosophy that 
language and literacy happen all of the time, right? You don't get a break from language and literacy in a preschool early childhood classroom. So you need to make sure that you're doing, um, you are giving kids opportunities throughout all of the centers all over the place. So in dramatic play and block areas, are you helping them by adding new words when they're doing, um, you know, if they're playing hospital, are you helping them with the word syringe or, you know, if they're acting out getting vaccinations, you're talking about that, giving them those, those new words. Um, classroom displays, displaying the work that they're doing, Ch small group and chalkboard activities. Small groups are so important and we, I think we don't do enough of that in preschool classrooms. Um, we tend to do large group and one-on-one -on -one, and small groups are really important because you get more interaction with other kids and the teacher all at the same time, you get more focus on what you're doing. Um, use of language and literacy as part of regular routines and as part of transitions. So language and literacy should be happening all day, every day in preschools. Like this should just be automatically happening. Then you should be also thinking about how can I encourage more of it? How can I scaffold what they're doing? How can I enhance their learning opportunities and experiences here. Um, and then you also want to think about using it as transitions because using language and literacy. So what that means is singing songs, saying rhymes while we move from one activity to another because it gives a break in the activity so that children can reset themselves so they know that something else is going to happen. It makes it an interesting and um, joyful time to move from one to another if you're singing a song about it. It reminds us what we're doing and what we're going to be doing. So using those cues, those songs, those um, rhymes to move from one activity to another is really important. Technology and literacy. So you are thinking about, so computers and literacy. Also think about listening. Um, what are you listening to? Um, what are you looking at? How am I how am I um, helping you understand how technology is involved in communicating with others? Oops, okay. Benefits of computers. So my preschool classrooms did not have computers. Um, and I, I feel pretty strongly about this. And um, I, I know others have equally strong feelings about this. Kids spend an inordinate amount of time on computers and it's even more and more like all the time. And I think that preschool specifically should be a place where they get a break from that, that um, a half day or all day preschool program, maybe an all day preschool program has an hour or less of um, technology time during the day. Um, but we really need to make our focus in early childhood active learning, not sitting in front of a computer learning. Um, and I know that there are ways to do active learning with a computer, but I think that giving kids that couple of years of not um, having that be such an important part of their learning is really important. Um, we know that children, you know, from toddlerhood on are exposed to technology. Um, iPads have been like a huge saver for kids, people with kids that need to be, you know, um, engaged in something, but it's not the same as the um, person to person um, really engaged experiences that children should be having in preschool. So language arts related benefits of computers, like I said, there are, yes, absolutely. My personal preference is we don't need that in the classroom. So I'm gonna skip over some computer stuff. It's all in your book so you can look at it. And that's it. <laughs>